So this session is about three remarkable features of medullary thyroid carcinoma. But even before I start about medullary thyroid carcinoma, I like to discuss a few basic things uh, starting from level zero. So the first thing that you need to know, even before you start to learn about thyroid cancers, that majority of the thyroid cancers are primary cancer. That means they arise in the thyroid. And most of the thyroid cancers are carcinomas. 95% of them, they're carcinomas. Because you know that a cancer can arise in various forms. A malignancy can arise in various forms. It can arise from epithelial tissue, we call it carcinoma. If it arises from the solid mesenchymal tissue, we call it sarcoma. If it arises from the lymphoid tissue, usually called lymphoma. But the majority of the thyroid cancers which we see, they are carcinomas. They are not sarcomas, they are not lymphoma. 95% of them, they are carcinomas. Can sarcomas be seen in the thyroid? Yes, but it's very rare. Sarcomas like lyoma sarcoma, uh, sarcomas like fibrosarcoma, they have been reported, but it's very, 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 very uncommon. Can lymphomas be seen in the thyroid? Yes, it can be seen, but it's also very uncommon. Usually, whatever we see, a few cases that are basically B-cell origin non-Hodgkin lymphoma. So the number one type of thyroid cancer which we see, they're carcinomas. And most of the thyroid cancers which we see, uh, they're carcinomas. These carcinomas usually arise from a particular epithelium that is called follicular epithelium. Now, what is follicle? We also know that this is a basic fundamental concept that uh, let's say from for the kidney, the basic structure and function unit is the nephron. But for thyroid, the basic structure and function unit is a follicle. And these follicles, they're usually lined by some cuboidal epithelium, usually called follicular epithelium. And majority of the thyroid cancers, they arise from this follicular epithelial epithelium, their epithelium origin. That's why they're called carcinomas. So what are the four key types of thyroid cancers we see? We see papillary carcinoma, we see follicular carcinoma, we see medullary carcinoma, we see anaplastic carcinoma. Now, papillary and follicular carcinoma, they arise from this follicular epithelium. Even the anaplastic carcinoma, which is rare, uncommon, but has the poorest prognosis, they are also dedifferentiated from, they also arise from this follicular epithelium. But the one which does not arise from the follicular epithelium, that is the topic of the day. That is medullary thyroid carcinoma, MTC. Now, medullary thyroid carcinoma arises from cells which are called parafollicular cells. Because these cells lies parallel to the follicle, parafollicular. And these cells are also called C cells because they re release a hormone calcitonin. What is the job of calcitonin? We all know calcitonin's job is to tone down the level of calcium. I am calcitonin because I tone down calcitonin, tone down calcium. That is the normal job of the normal function of the parafollicular cells or C cells. Now, from this parafollicular cells or C cells, a particular type of thyroid cancer arises. That cancer is called medullary thyroid carcinoma. Now, medullary thyroid carcinoma is prognostically, it's, it's not as good as medullary papillary thyroid cancer, but not as bad as the anaplastic carcinoma. Papillary has the best prognosis. Anaplastic has the poorest prognosis. It somewhere sits in between. And number-wise, they roughly is around 5%. That means, let's say, 1 in 20 to 25 cases of thyroid cancer will be getting one medullary thyroid cancer. Roughly around 5%. Some studies says 2 to 4%. Now, medullary thyroid carcinoma has some unique feature. One unique feature I like to tell is location. It is usually typically located at a particular site of the thyroid. The usual location is that if you divide the thyroid, one-third, upper one-third, middle one third and the lower one third. Typically it would be located at the junction of the upper one third and the lower two third. Upper one third and the lower two third at this junction. Why? Because this region has the highest frequency of the parafollicular cells or C cell. It is one important aspect of the middle thyroid cancer. Second important aspect of the middle thyroid cancer is tumor marker, which is very, very important actually clinically. There are typically one you all know that is calcitonin. And, but another important tumor marker that you need to keep in mind about MTC, and it has some prognostic significance, that is CA. So there are two important tumor markers which are associated with middle thyroid cancer. One is calcitonin, which is also used for post-operative follow-up. 
uh, for diagnostic and prognostic assessment. Another T1 marker is CA, carcinoembryonic antigen. And what is the significance of carcinoembryonic antigen in the context of middle thyroid cancer? The significance is this that CA levels when if they become high it basically indicates de-differentiation of the MTC and it carries poorer prognosis. Then the next aspect I would like to touch it's their uh, presentation. Around roughly 70% cases of middle thyroid cancers are familial. Sporadic, sorry, I'm very sorry, sporadic, but 30% cases are the familial. Familial means they are associated with particular syndromes. There are three important syndromes which they are associated with, MEN 2A, MEN 2B and familial MTC syndrome. But 2015 onwards, familial MTC syndrome has become, familial middle thyroid carcinoma syndrome has become a part of MEN 2A. So nowadays you can say it's MEN 2A with familial MTC and the MEN 2B syndrome. Now 70% are usually occurring without an association with syndrome and 30% is usually as occurring in association of the main syndrome, main 2A and 2B. Now here important aspect is that main 2A and 2B both occurs due to germline mutation of the red protongogene. So the gene is same but the exons are different. In main 2A typically we see the exons which are involved is 10 and 11 and the main 2B it is exclusively the exon number 16. That is the one which I uh, gave as a question today also because it is a highly conceptual topic because the gene is same main for main 2A to be, but the sites are different when the mutation is occurring. For main 2A, the site is exon 10 or 11, and for main 2B, it is exclusively exon 16. That is need to keep in mind. Now, coming to their presentation, clinical presentation. Now, obviously, uh, like any other cancer, middle thyroid cancer can present with a solitary thyroid nodule. It can present with lymphatic invasion because it's a carcinoma carcinoma loves lymphatic spread through lymphatics it can be there be hematogenous metastasis to the distant sites like lung that is also possible it can also present with a local infiltration or invasion that means there could be invasion to the trachea causing respiratory distress uh, could be there could be invasion of the esophagus with dysphagia another interesting aspect of presentation of middle thyroid cancer is uh, paraneoplastic manifestation so it can release a lot of hormones like vasoactive intestinal peptides. So it can present with diarrhea. It can even present with Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome is another interesting paraneoplastic manifestation of medullary thyroid cancers. So it can present as a solitary thyroid nodule. It can present with a lymphatic metastasis. It can present with a hematogenous metastasis. It can present with a local invasion. It can present with paraneoplastic syndrome. So there are various way of presentation and sometimes the presentation could be associated with if they are associated with main 2A to be associated feature of like for example main 2A if they are associated main 2A has typically three things one is primary hyperparathyroidism so there could be presentation with hypercalcemia uh, there could be presentation with features of hypertension like in pheochromocytoma plus the feature of MTC in main 2B uh, primary hyperparathyroidism is absent but uh, pheochromocytoma is there, MTC is there, middle thyroid cancer is there. Plus there is a marfanoid habitus, marfan-like feature, but actually it's not marfan syndrome. And there could be mucosal neuromas of tongue and oral cavity. So sometimes they can ask you, let's say they give you a case scenario uh, and they want to know that, do you really know the difference between main 2A and 2B? What is the easiest way to differentiate between main 2A and 2B? If they give main 2A, they definitely would give the serum calcium level high because main 2A is usually associated with the hyperparathyroidism. But if they are not mentioning about serum calcium level, it is not high, but they are rather talking about marfanoid habitus, there is a long uh, body structure of the patient, uh, long, uh, there is a presence of mucosal neuromas over the tongue, yellowish lesions over the tongue, this kind of things they are telling, then obviously it is they are talking about main 2B. Uh, another important aspect of the this uh, MTC, middle thyroid carcinoma, which is usually from a microscopic perspective that they usually associate with amyloid deposition in the tumor stroma. If they are mentioning about this feature, amyloid deposition in the tumor stroma, which it can be detected in the FNSC or post-surgical resected specimen, then is also highly characteristic of the middle thyroid cancers. So these are some key features of MTC that you can keep in mind. Thank you so much.